in the kit you get just basically two sets of the same. Uh, you've obviously got your main loom here, which goes directly to the battery. So it's all encased in one piece. You've got your relay in there, so it's all ready to go. Now this is the important bit. This is our switch. So what you get is these two little tiny switches. So it's a dual heat system. You've got obviously low and high for the heated seats, which is great. And they're just a push in fit when you drill the hole out. So they're super simple to fit. You can fit them in metal housing, you can fit them in wood, whatever you want. You just need to get that drilled out to the correct size and then you just slide in and clip. Normally, if I didn't have the sliding drawer system installed, I would definitely put the switches in my cubby box. It's wood, it's easy to drill through. They push fit really nicely. But because it's sliding, the wires are all going to get tangled up. And at the moment, all the wires for the stereo and everything are fed from there. There's already uh, an aperture at the back, so I can pull the wires out. And there's a feed. I've got a harness going through. So it makes perfect sense to just join things onto that harness itself. We are getting a bit chunky on the harnesses. So I'm just wondering whether moving forward, we might want to sort of reroute that somehow actually underneath and into that, into that battery box. But for now... I think we'll just do a simple installation and get it to feed through into the battery box and we'll put the holes at the front of our drawer system. I've got my masking tape in place. I've just covered the front there just to avoid scratching it in case I slip with the drill bit. Uh, I've then measured and marked my point and I've also used a punch just to start. Use my best drill bit just to get uh, started on those holes. Now what I've done here on the step drill is I've actually put a zip tie on the 22, which is the next step down from 20, which is what I need. That means I'll know how far to go in. So it's a nice little trick. Um, you can use a Sharpie pen, but the little zip tie is a bit better. It, obviously it helps stop because you've got this on there just in case you miss it. But little trick there, you can then drill through to 20 mil and we know you've got the right size. <laughs> Make sure you've got your up and down in the right place. Perfect. So if you've got a more modern Defender, you can run it to your fuse board and you're going to have um, options there for heated seat, fuse, relays, etc. But we're obviously doing it old school. We're going straight to the battery. So you've got this wiring loom. Now you've got two of these, one for each seat. So this is kind of the negative side to retrofitting heated seats in Defender. You do get a lot of wires to deal with. Now we've got our relay here, and then we've got our main feed that goes to the battery. So that would just simply go below me here into the battery box. So as you can see, because our switches are in the cubby box uh, drawer, the relay is probably going to have to be situated in there as well because we don't have much flex. But what we do have, again, is the flex, way too much flex we have here, and that's to go to our seat. So, again, a lot of that's going to be bundled up in this, this uh, cubby drawer. I've finally managed to tidy up all the wires. I've got everything insulated, gathered together. And what I've got here is I've got my two connections that go straight to the battery. Now, the positives I've just grouped together because obviously you've got left and right hand seats and they are both individually fused. So I've got inline fuse down here as well. Uh, that's got, um, that's easy access. I can't get any further into the box, but that should be fine. So yeah, I'm just gonna get this connected up to the battery and then we should be done. Okay, so I've spoiled the surprise for you a little bit. I have actually fitted the passenger side. It's all good. Just a couple of tips. Uh, when you're moving your seat into the vehicle, take the seat base off. There's two reasons for that. One is because there's a wire tucked away, and we'll come to that in a moment, but also it makes the seat a lot lighter, easier to handle. And the other thing I'd recommend is if you can, if it makes sense, and just think about perhaps bringing the seat in from the second row doors, if you can. Collapse the seat as if it's reclined forwards. Open it up to the first latch and just offer it into position like that. Out of the box, you might find your runners a slightly skew whiff, either this way or the, that way. Don't worry, just loosen the bar at the front and get them just so they match up. Once you've got your front two ready, you just want to drop them into place. Okay, so once you've got your front two uh, bolts in place, you want to lift that bar at the front. It's exactly the same as a standard Defender seat. Lift it up, slide it forwards, and then you can get access to those bolts in the back. So I just thought I'd whip out the bases and compare them just to give you an idea. 
Now, when I sat in the vehicle, I actually thought these were quite a bit shorter because they felt shorter, but that is because they lift your legs, they get under your thighs better because you've got loads more padding there, you can see. Um, but actually, the profile of them is exactly the same, but you do get a really nice solid bolster there. So that gives you an idea of the difference. So now we'll put the seat base in. Careful not to trap your hose for your lumbar support. You want to just bring that forward and slide it down there. So we've got one wire that does the back heated element and the second wire is actually tucked away in here. So you want to pull that out, feed it through the back. There we go. Wow. The one thing I didn't check, which isn't the end of the world, but I didn't check which one was left and which one was right on my switches. So let's hope we got it right. So you've got two connectors here and you've got your upper back, your lower seat base. So you just want to pop these in. Now these prongs in here can wiggle around a little bit. So just make sure they're pointing up when you put them in, because I won't say these aren't the, the best connectors in the world. If you know how to manipulate those barbs, just get them to point up a little bit and there you go, they're all connected up. What a difference. I'd like to do a before and after if I can. So if I've got a camera angle like this, uh, before we put these seats in, it's not just the seats, but it's also this trim, the carpet. Do you know what? The one thing that's letting it down, unfortunately, is the cubby box. And like I said, these seats, if you saw the quick clip that I did um, when these arrived, I did a short just to say they'd arrived. And when I opened them, I genuinely thought they were leather. I really did. But I had to sniff them to make sure because the grain, the texture, the feel of them is so much like leather. When it said vinyl, I honestly thought it would be this cheap vinyl that you get on this cubby box. And I was like, well, we can't really afford leather, so let's go for vinyl. But let's hope it looks good. And it looks amazing. I mean, it really does. And I'll, I'll show you some close-ups now. Okay, so first impressions. Let's have a look. Ugh. Well, I'm not the skinniest of people, I'll be honest, but my ass does fit in those seats and it's just slowly sinking in between these two bolsters, which is really nice. Your bum is sitting right in this centerpiece here. It's giving you nice support on your legs, so it does feel more comfortable. These aren't digging in at all. They're just offering a really nice bit of support. I mean, they do feel nice, they really do. The nice thing I like about these is they do look like an evolution of the standard Defender seat. So the frame is the same, the way it moves, the handles, the levers, the arms, the, uh, the removable seat base, it's all exactly the same as a standard Defender seat, which is really nice because that's what we're used to and that's what we like. Um, but you have got the support. So what you're getting as an extra on this is you're getting this bolstered support, both on the base and on the back. And you've got this really nice, solid, much more modern looking headrest. I think it looks much nicer, much cleaner, and they just, they just fit, they just look right. 